This talk is going to be very, very code-centric. I'm going to talk about a bit about ideas, but it's not primarily going to be about uh, why you should use actors and the actor model. Um, so if you're uh, interested in that, then this is not the talk. Um, if you were up really late last night and, and drank a lot, so you're ha having a really bad hangover, it's also going to be a bit hard to follow because it's going to be a lot of code in here. Uh, for the rest of you, I, I hope you'll enjoy this. Um, so before I start, um, how many of you have heard about Akka before? Okay, that's almost everyone. That's nice. Uh, how many of you have, have tried out and built something with, with Akka and Actors? Okay, a bit fewer. All right, and how many of you are uh, Java developers? Or do, do Java? Okay, also mostly all one. Okay, great. Um, short about me before getting to the interesting stuff. Uh, I work in the, in the Akka team at Lightbend, and Lightbend is uh, the company behind Akka, Play Framework, Scala programming language, uh, Logom, microservice framework, uh, a bunch of other things. Um, and I co-organized Scala user group up in Stockholm together with Eno, who sits over there. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So uh, since pretty much everyone knew about Akka, um, not much more to say. I think one important thing is so Akka is a toolkit, it's not a framework. Uh, if you compare it to something like Play Framework or Spring or something like that, it kind of uh, decides for you how your application should be structured and all those kinds of parts. While Akka you can just pull in into a project and use it for a small part. It doesn't kind of uh, devour your entire project. Um, and it contains a bunch of different tools. So what are those tools? Um, well, the first and most uh, central one is actors. Um, and then there is support for clustering with actors and a bunch of tools of things that you often want to do when you build distributed systems. That's the cluster tools. Uh, and we have Akka Streams, which is a asynchronous back pressured um, streaming library. And Again, Eno is going to talk more about that uh, later today, I think after lunch. So if that's interesting, you should go and see that. Um, we have something called Akka Persistence, which allows you to do event sourcing and CQRS with, with actors, which is a really nice fit. And we have an HTTP and HTTP2 server and HTTP client called Akka, Akka HTTP uh, for interacting interacting with the rest of the world. And also not in here, um, because it's a quite new module, is Akka gRPC, uh, which is both server and client side for gRPC, where you can use these uh, same streaming abstractions to, to consume and publish uh, services with, with Google RPC. Um, and Alpaca, which is, again, what Eno is going to talk about. And that's like the, uh, uh, the camel of Akka streams. So it contains connectors to various technologies like uh, Kafka, JMS, um, Amazon S3. So you can stream data through your application to, from different places to different places. Enterprise integration kind of thing. Um, so most of, most of those things are um, already typed. Um, so the streaming part already was typed from day one th throughout the APIs. Uh, the HTTP one, pretty much as well. Um, actors, however, have historically had an API where you're not sure if an actor can receive a message that you send to it. It doesn't show in the signature. Um, this, I think, has made a lot of people shy away from it because that's like your first reaction when you see it. It's like, oh my god, I'm losing type safety here. Um, so this is what we're going to cover today. And actually, we're going to cover a bit of typed cluster and the cluster tools as well. Um, the library itself is written in Scala. Uh, and we really like Scala in the Akka team. Uh, but it, for every uh, API we have, we also have a Java one. So we do work hard to have a full uh, 
Java native kind of experience with actors as well. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going to do all the samples in Java, but I'm also quickly going to show them in, in Scala so you can get a feeling for how they look. Or if you want to go back to the slides afterwards, you can check out the Scala source if that's what you're interested in. So at the core of, uh, of the actors is this idea that the only way you can interact with an actor is through a single method, basically. And this method is called tell. So whenever you want to interact with an actor from whatever thread in your, uh, in your application, you will have to send it a message through the tell, me tell method on an actor ref. And this basically puts the message into uh, an inbox, and the actor system of Akka manages scheduling processing of this message. And on the receiving side, inside of the actor, uh, you can do three things when you get a message, when you're processing a message. So you can mutate state, so you can keep and mutate state even though um, the senders of messages can be on any thread of your application. You can still just keep a, a regular uh, unsynchronized mutable state inside of your actor and that will be safe. So no kind of threading sy primitive synchroni synchronization or stuff like that. Um, you can send a message to one or more other actors as a reaction. Uh -huh. And finally, you can change the behavior of the actor for the next message that comes in. So imagine, for example, a uh, circuit breaker, uh, which somehow gets the information that this thing that it's protecting with as a circuit breaker is broken right now. And then the circuit breaker opens up and we want to fail fast and reply back and say like, sorry, uh, the service isn't there, stop bombarding it. Um, and then for every like 10 messages that come in, we want to try and see if the service is up again and we can close the circuit breaker and, again, change the behavior of the actor. Uh, but there's a lot of cases where you would want to have a bit different behavior depending on previous messages, so to speak. So let's get to some code. Um, this is like an entire Hello World application with imports and everything, but I guess you might not be able to see this, so let's like zoom in on the parts. So when we write this, we start with defining uh, a protocol, an immutable message that we can send to our actor. So in this case, it's a, it's a single field class. And, uh, and the field in the class is final, so it's immutable. We can't change it after the fact. And the reason why we want it to be immutable is that the JVM gives guarantees around uh, thread, thread access and visibility when stuff happens in the constructor and never changes after that. So this means we can create this message on any thread and we can send it to the actor and the actor can process it and look at the value and there will never be any kind of issues with uh, that the change didn't actually go to memory when the actor read it. Then we use this uh, behaviors.receive, which is like a, a factory to define a behavior for an actor. And it takes one parameter, which is like the top level type of the protocol. And in this case, we have only one message that our actor can accept. Like normally, this would probably be like an interface which defines you know, the top level type, and we have maybe a few different messages that the actor will accept. And we will see this in further examples. Um, but in this case, we have a single final class that is, this is the thing that we can receive. Um, and then we defined like a uh, handler for when this message comes in. So on message hello.class says when there's a message of this type, invoke this lambda. And the lambda also gets uh, an additional parameter, which is the context. And the context is access to things to the running actor. For example, the, the logger, um, spawning children, uh, stopping the actor, things like that. Um, and in this case, we're going to use the context and get the log out of it and then log something with it. So we're going to take the, the who from the message and we're going to log hello world or hello who in this case. 
Uh, and then as a last step, we return what behavior is going to be used for processing the next message that comes in. And uh, since this is like a super simple hello world, uh, we're not going to change the behavior, we're going to stay in the same behavior. So we use behavior.same to say like, for the next message, keep this behavior. Right? And then we create an actor system. And the actor system is like the container of Akka, which runs the actor and schedules actors on a thread pool, basically. Has a bunch of other kind of little facilities inside of it as well. Um, and in Akka typed, we need to define a, a root behavior for this actor system. So the actors are f organized in like a tree. Um, so an actor can spawn children, and that becomes uh, branches in this tree, and those children can spawn children, and that's how it becomes a tree. And the root actor is the root, which lives up in the in the top of it. Um, so the actor system has a type parameter in this case. As you can see, uh, actor system hello, and this hello is what kind of message it can accept, right? So this comes from how we defined the behavior with a type parameter up in the previous slide. Um, and then we can tell this actor f, so the actor system is also an actor f, to the top actor. And then we can use tell to send it messages. So in this case, we're going to do a hello, Joan, and then hello, our dev audience. And then just a little kind of boilerplate to keep it keep it running until we press some key when we try it out. And this is the same in Scala, pretty much the same, a little bit more concise maybe. Um, so this was like a super simple, not very useful example, so let's do something a bit more interesting. Uh, so we're going to take the, the previous sample, which just did a hello and took something out of the message, uh, and we're going to instead have a, a configurable um, greeting. So we're going to be able to send a message to the actor and tell it to change the kind of greeting it gives when it gets the message. So we're adding a, su a common super type called command, uh, an interface. And then we had add another message called change greeting. And then we change the hello that we have before to extend this interface. And now we can say, like, the protocol of our actor is command. It can accept these two messages. So it's basically like a marker interface. Uh, or if you're into functional programming, you, we're kind of doing an ADT here. We, we're saying, like, this type has these different variations. They don't really have anything with each other to do, like you would usually use an interface in an inheritance hierarchy kind of thing. But instead, we're saying, like, all of these are of a, of a set, right? So a bit like an enum. Uh, yeah? So the question is, will the compiler complain if you don't uh, handle all the possible subtypes? Uh, in Java, that's not really possible, as far as I know. Uh, in Scala, we have that out of the box. So this will be up to you as a developer to not define a message and forget about handling it. Um, but there are ways to have behaviors that accept a subset of the messages and, and not fail for unknown messages, because you might have different behaviors that will ignore some of the messages in the protocol, or like sub-protocols, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, and there's more kind of different factors for doing things like that as well. Um, okay, so we now have receive.command.class because this is our the super type of the protocol, uh, and we're going to define two on message kind of clauses, uh, where the first one pr looks pretty much exactly like the old one with one change, and that is that we're taking this uh, greeting which is a parameter to the dynamic greeting behavior method. And we're using that instead of a hard-coded hello that we had before, right? 
So this means when we create it the first time, we have to give it like an initial greeting, right? So that would be maybe hello. Uh, and here comes the tricky, the tricky thing, and that is when we get the change greeting message, um, we call this factory method that defined the previous behavior with the new greeting. So it looks a bit like a rec recursive uh, method, but it's not actually like looping in the, same, in the same stack. It's something that happens for a message and then returns something that will be used to process the next message, right? This takes a bit um, time to get used to, especially if you're mostly doing like uh, OO kind of development. And you don't, you don't actually have to do it this style. This is just kind of my personal preferred style. And I will show you a, a different style in, in a little bit. Uh, so this is kind of the functional programming style, you could maybe say, because we're never, we're kind of mutating state, but we're actually no, never having a, a variable that we change the value of. Um, and this means we can start the behavior with hello, and then we send it uh, hello, Joan, and that means it's going to print hello, Joan, and then we change the greeting to hey, and then we send it a hello, Uradev Dev uh, um, audience, and it's going to say hey, Uradev audience. Right? And the same is Scala, and getting back to that kind of. Uh, as, as a lot of Java developers foremost, I would say, uh, would maybe not feel comfortable with this kind of trampolining between, uh, between states. Uh, it's also perfectly possible and uh, useful to instead define a class that is the behavior of the actor that keeps uh, just normal fields. So we extend something called an abstract behavior that takes a type parameter that defines what kind of messages it can receive. Um, and we can then put a mutable state inside of this class and implement an abstract method called createReceive, where we pretty much just delegate to different methods in this case. I think in general, this is something I would kind of recommend also for the functional programming style that you you do not define the behavior for a message um, in a lambda inline, so to speak, but that you instead use a method handle and defer it further down in the same class or kind of uh, just because it kind of quickly becomes unruly, uh, especially in Java, to have these kinds of nested lambda stuff going on. Uh, so in this case, uh, when we get the unchange greeting, uh, the change greeting, we call the method on change greeting, and we actually just change this field in our class. And when the next message comes, oh, sorry, and we return same because we want to stay in this behavior. So we could also have like a state machine with a few different implementations of this abstract behavior and jump between them, right? Uh, but in this case, it's a simple kind of just, just change this state. Right? And then when we run it, uh, we will have to uh, inject this context because the abstract behavior doesn't have it. So we will have to call this um, behaviors.setup, which will give us the context of the actor when it starts. So there's a little bit more, of, more, more boilerplate there, but nothing crazy. Um, so the whole point of this, as I said in the beginning is like the gut feeling when you start looking at actors, especially I think as a Java developer, but I also hear this a lot in the Scala community. It's like, oh my God, we're losing the types. Oh, this is crazy, I can't use this, you know. Um, I'm gonna send the wrong messages to the wrong actors all the time. Um, but I would actually argue uh, that that doesn't really happen that often. Like there are a few tricksy cases in Scala where you might do it and not notice. Uh, but in reality, from working with, with actors the last um, six years, it has happened to me like three times maybe, I don't know. So the, the kind of big gain of this API change and these new, new APIs is 
When I get to a new code base that are built with actors, it makes it so much faster to discover how things are connected. Like the types makes it so much easier to follow the flow of messages through the system and understand how the different parts communicate. And then, of course, you have like the compile time safety of not sending the wrong thing, but I would still kind of argue that that's secondary. Um, so let's go for a more realistic example quickly before I burn all my time on chatting. Um, so we're going to build a, a burglar alarm, and the requirement list is that it can be enabled and disabled with a pin code. Um, it has some notion of activity that comes from someone else, and when it sees activity and the alarm is enabled, then it should sound the alarm and call the police. So we're going to start with defining uh, the protocol, the messages. So it's going to be a enable alarm message that has a pin code in it. And it's going to be a disable alarm that has a pin code in it. And then it's going to be a, an empty class, an empty message that we send on activity. So of course, you might put some actual information about what activity it was. Uh, but, but just in this sample, we'll keep it simple. Um, and then we define how the, the alarm should behave when it's enabled. And the first thing we do is we take a pin code to it because we need to know what is the correct pin code. So if someone tries to disable the alarm, which is the first on message here, um, we can use a predicate to say only accept this message if this also is true. Uh, so if you see the comment predicate there. So we actually verify if uh, the pin code we have is the same as the one that someone put in the disable alarm message, right? Um, and if we do, we call a method that we haven't defined yet that defines how the, be the alarm behaves in a disabled state. Uh, if we see activity when the alarm is enabled, we're going to sound the alarm, right? Uh, simulated by a nice warning log log message here. Uh -huh. And the disabled alarm, it simply accepts uh, enable alarm. It doesn't care about other messages. Uh -huh. And it only enables the alarm if you have the right pin code, so the kids don't turn on the alarm while you're still at home. And then we can interact with it, create the root actor with this alarm, just like this. and send it some activity, disable, enable, this kind of thing. And the same in Scala. Um, there's some things that get a bit trickier with, with typed actors than with the untyped APIs. And I would say request response between actors is probably the one that is mostly complicated, or the most complicated one. So in um, in account typed, we have whenever you're in an actor and you receive a message, there is a magic sender method which will give you the sender, the actor ref of the actor that sent you the message. So you can reply back with a message. Right. In account type, there is no such magic sender because we couldn't know what the type of that sender would be, right? Like it could be any actor in the system. How would we know what kind of messages that actor accepts? So you need to encode uh, the actor ref to reply to inside of the protocol, inside of the message. So if you want someone to be able to respond to you, you will have make that an explicit part of the protocol, so a field in the, in the message class. And that field will have the actor ref, which is typed and says what kind of messages you can send back to it. So this introduces a problem. Um, so we have an, an actor that has one protocol A, and we have another actor that has protocol B, and a part of this protocol B is this uh, request, and inside of this request we need to provide a actor F that accepts a specific message, right, the response. Um, but this response is a part of this remote actor, the other actor's protocol, it's not part of our actor's protocol. 
So how do we deal with providing an actor f that the other actor can respond to when it's not part of the messages that we can actually receive? Right. So we need to somehow transform this message from the other actor into a message that belongs to us or somehow is part of our protocol. Um, Right? Because we don't want to, we can't go to the protocol of someone else and start including their messages in our own protocol. That's not really uh, a good way to get a nicely, loosely coupled system. That will create big spaghetti of dependencies, right? So how we do this um, for the case of sending a single request response, we know there will be only be one response. So this would kind of match an asynchronous uh, method call um, is that on the context, the actor context, there's an ask method and the ask method gives us a facility, a way to transform the response to a message that we can accept. And we'll, that will then kind of arrive at our actor just like any other message sent to it. So I think we're, we're not going to linger more on this. Um, so one of the cooler thing with actors is that it can model more kinds of interaction than just request response. If it was just, just about request response, it would just be an inconvenient way to do that, I think. Uh, but you could also model things where you uh, provide subscribe and you get a lot of messages back over time, right? Uh, or you subscribe and you never get a message back. There's like kind of more interaction patterns. And for the case where we don't have a single, single kind of request response uh, cycle, we can use a message adapter. And a message adapter will also provide this facility to transform a message that's not part of our protocol into a message that is a part of our protocol. Uh, and we get an actor f that we can keep over time inside of the actor and pass in many messages to different instances, different other actors that all need the same kind of way to respond. Um, it's, it's often interesting to have like subsets of the protocol where not everyone is allowed to send all of the messages. And we can do this with a type system by just having a common super type and then subtypes. And then when we hand the actor f to someone else, we we narrow down the type down into this tree. So this means that the, the other part that you're handing this actor f out to, they won't know that they can send any other messages, right? So they would have to do a, as instance of kind of crazy casting stuff and that would ob be obvious that that's not you know, safe to do. So let's talk a little bit about distributed systems. Let's see, I still have time, yeah. Um, so, the actor model fits really well with, with networking and building distributed systems because uh, networks are about packets. There is no guarantee that something arrives in the other end. Uh, or if it arrived at the other end, there's no guarantee that we really know that it did unless we build specific protocols for this, right? So we might have a case where we send something to another node, it started doing some business transaction, but the network failed before it completed. And even though the transaction completed successfully, we don't have a way to get a response that said like, yeah, that went fine. So we're gonna see it as something went wrong, right? Um, so all of this fits really well with a message protocol because uh, you would have to send something back. And if you really wanna know that something happened, you will have to retry when you didn't get the response. And if you really, really want to make sure that things work, right, you would have to have a sequence number so you don't do the same thing twice when you retry. And you would also have to retry the response and things like that. So you can kind of decide on what level of delivery guarantees you want to aim at for every kind of interaction. Um, another pretty cool thing is if we have a chain of nodes, 
So a message, message comes from, from node A and it goes to node B, and node B passes that to node C. Node C can respond directly to node, node A instead of going like back through the chain of calls like you would have to do with RPC, for example. So this is also a really nice kind of peer-to-peer -peer fit with actors. Um, and we're also not limited to a request response pattern across the network, but we can subscribe to something on a different node and they will send us events back. Um, so if we have a, a local actor system with actors that communicate with messages, we can potentially just split that up in two different JVMs on different machines and still be sending messages between them like this, right? Like there is no shared mutable state that we would have to do magics with or anything like that. So, um, you can take a few actor systems and form a cluster. And the actors inside of this cluster, they can communicate with each other. The core kind of abstraction for, for doing this, like the, the central thing in Akatyped, is we need to get a typed reference to an actor on a different node. So we can't like look it up through uh, a path, a string, for example, because how would that give us what kind of type it accepts, what kind of message it would accept, right? So we need a way to do that within the type system. Uh, and this we have built with the, um, something called the receptionist. And the receptionist is also just an actor. Uh, it runs when you run unclustered ACA, it will be a local receptionist, and when you do cluster, it will be a clustered receptionist, like out of the box. And the clustered receptionist um, is kind of the, the interesting part. It allows you to subscribe to a specific key, and it also allows you to uh, register to a specific key. And whenever someone who has subscribed, sorry, whenever someone registers, uh, an actor for a key that someone has subscribed to, the subscriber will get an update of who, what actors are registered that support this key, right? And the key itself takes a type parameter, which is the protocol. So you will know even though the potential actors that uh, support this protocol are on different nodes, you will know that you uh, get the right kind of type for, for them. Uh, and when we get this listing, we can then keep, keep it locally and send messages to it. So we're going to update um, the um, burglar alarm to make it distributed. Um, so this is the new requirements, or the added requirements. Uh, we could potentially have any number of nodes in our alarm cluster. And there ca a sensor can live on any node in the cluster, and whatever the sensor is triggered, it will report to the alarm or the alarms, which can live on different nodes on the cluster. Like, they don't have to know the specific machine that the, uh, uh, that the alarm is on. It just, they just know that there is an alarm. So, um, the same protocol as before. We have the enable alarm, disable alarm, activity event. Um, but we also define this service key. And the service key takes a, a type parameter and a class that says this is the kind of messages that a service that you can register with this key accepts. So in this case, we're going to take a, a subset of the messages. Right? We're not going to allow any, no, any actor on any node to disable and enable the alarm. We're just going to allow them to report activity. So that's where we're going to put the activity event in the key. Right? And this gives, gives us a service key typed with, with activity event. Um, and then when we start up the alarm, we uh, get a handle to this receptionist actor. And the receptionist, since that is also just an actor, it has its own protocol. right? So it has the receptionist.command as the super type of 
kind of all the messages you can send to it. Um, and we get it through the context. So the context gives us the, the system, like the above the root actor, and the system gives us access to the receptionist. Um, and then we send it a register message. So uh, receptionist.register in this case is a factory to create a message. So it could just as well be uh, like a new, a new one, a call to a constructor. Um, and we pass it the service key we're going to register uh, an actor for, and then we give it the actor f that fulfills this uh, service protocol. And in this case, that's going to be ourself because we're starting the alarm actor. So we're getting a reference to ourself with the context.getself. And then we transition into the uh, enabled alarm uh, behavior. So we can keep the, the enabled and disabled alarm just exactly like they were before. We're just doing a bit of stuff before we, before we get there. Uh, if the actor would stop, it would be automatically uh, unregistered from the receptionist. Um, on the sensor side, um, we need to do a bit more work. So uh, we're going to keep a set of the alarms in the system because there could be alarms on more than one node now. So we need to keep track of them. Um, and when we start, we create an adapter. And we need to create this adapter because we need to adapt the messages from the receptionist. And in the next step, we subscribe to the receptionist and we say like, whenever there are uh, an update to the available actors that are registered for this service key, send us a message. And this message will be the um, uh, receptionist.listing. Uh, and we need to turn this receptionist.listing into a message of our own protocol. So we have a message that is our own that is called new, uh, sorry, alarm actor update. Okay. So this makes it possible to basically like test this behavior without doing the whole cluster thing because we can just in a, in a, not a unit test, but a bit an asynchronous test, we can actually construct this alarm actor update ourselves, right? And just send it to, to the, uh, sensor to, to verify things works. Uh, and then we just send this adapter actor f to the receptionist with, with the service key and say like we want to register for this service key. Okay, so whenever there is an update, the receptionist sends back a receptionist.listing and we transform it into our own message and which is the alarm actor update, which is sent to our regular kind of message receive logic. And that is this part. So we basically accept two different messages here. Uh, one is the alarm actor update. And whenever we get that, we just update the set of actors that we know are alarms, right? Um, and the other thing we accept is the trigger sensor. And when that happens, we go through this set of uh, alarms and we tell each of the alarm, oh, we saw activity, right? And this is gonna be sent probably across the network to a different node, uh, but it could also be the same node, we don't know. So it's kind of transparent where the, where the location of the receiving actor, al alarm actor is. Okay, it's a bit dense and to stuff this into a 40 minute talk, but I hope kind of the general idea is ingraspable at least. Um, so this, then we wire things up, and this is actually the complete logic to, to form a three node cluster that runs in the same JVM. So we, we can start three actor systems that will communicate with each other over TCP. Uh, just like this with code. Um, and then just a loop that lets us kind of put some uh, user input into our terminal to trigger activity and see that things works. Okay, so uh, what I hope that you will uh, 
see as the takeaway from this talk is um, an actor can receive messages and when it receives a message it can do three things. It can safely mutate internal state, uh, it can change, sorry, it can message to a different actor if it wants to or it can change its behavior. Um, and this new typed APIs, uh, there's still not like a final release of it. We've been working on it for quite a while, uh, hoping to reach like a kind of 1.0 GA freezing APIs state uh, early next year, I would guess. But it's still, it's already been quite stable, as spe especially like the core ideas have, has been the same for, for a long while now. Uh, and that the actor model gives you like an abstraction that you can use both to do concurrency locally and build distributed things where you need to scale out for some reason. Um, so there's a GitHub repo with runnable samples of all stuff I showed in the talk. Um, we do put a lot of effort into writing documentation. So if you found this interesting, do go to doc.aka.io and look at the docs, uh, see more samples, explanations about things. Um, if you have questions, if you want to interact with people, we have discuss.aka.io, uh, open forums. Um, or if you want to get involved in the project, then just the aka slash aka project at GitHub. All right. so. Uh, is there any questions? Great, it was crystal clear. Thank you for being a, a great audience. Uh, feel free to come up and talk, chat with me afterwards. And thanks for listening.